Today we're going to be talking about uh, true love, uh, which is God's love. Uh, in today's society, we're we're in such a rush. We want everything now, uh, and in this rush, we forget about connecting with God and our relationship with His Son. Uh, the result has been devastating, and we can see it everywhere. Uh, we don't know our neighbors. Families are being torn apart, uh, as is apparent in the high divorce rates we see, even among Christian couples. We care so little about what is happening to other people in our own communities and around the world. Uh, God is a God of love, uh, not the fleeting love of the flesh that has no depth to it, but true love. God loves us in such a way that none can really comprehend comprehend how strong his love uh, is for us. To, to see this, uh, we need look no further than the most uh, known Bible verse, uh, John 3.16. In this verse, we see it stated that, for God so loved the world. Uh, there it is in the first statement, God loves the world. He loves you. He loves me. Uh, he loves the lost. He loves the found. God loves even those who, who reject him. Uh, the, the next part of the verse tells us that he sent his only begotten son, that none should perish but have everlasting life. Uh, to comprehend this meaning, you need look at one of the gospel accounts of Jesus' crucifixion, uh, any of them. You can see it in any of these accounts. Crucifixion was one of the worst ways to die. Jesus was beaten, mocked, whipped, spat upon, a crown of thorns uh, forced down upon his head, uh, and then he was nailed to a cross to die a, a slow and agonizing death. Jesus did this to cleanse the world of our sins, to give us the opportunity to live with him forever in heaven. Our, our filth was washed away. We became clean. Uh, he suffered a death that we should have suffered. Why did he do this? He did this so that we won't have to suffer the torture of hell, an eternity of separation from Christ. Instead, we get to love the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and we get to live with them forever in heaven, uh, washed in His glory. The opportunity to worship and praise our Heavenly King forever, never separated from His wonderful grace. This is love, a love we cannot fathom. Uh, on earth, we speak of love so f flippantly, but God regards love highly. In Leviticus 19.18, uh, here it's stated, Do not seek revenge or bear a grudge against one of your people and love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. We are commanded here to love our neighbor. God does not want us to keep God's love for ourself. Uh, and G Jesus repeats this message time and time again in the New Testament. Uh, we are to show this love to our neighbors. In so doing, we will show the world God's love, helping them to know the love of Christ. How can we do this? Uh, by supporting the poor and downtrodden, by showing uh, not anger and hate towards those who wrong us, but sharing God's word with them and, and, and showing them love in, in response to, to, to their actions. And we need to share this, this love and, and God's word with, with the world. There are so many things we can do to show this love. It's, it's why volunteering and missions are so important whether it's going to work in orphanages or building homes for the poor or dig digging wells 
or simply sharing the gospel message with, with a friend, neighbor, or coworker. Keeping God's love for ourselves is selfish and has eternal ramifications for those who are unsaved. Share God's love with someone today. Joshua 22, verse 5. Uh, here we see a, another example uh, of, of this love that, that we are commanded. It says, But be very careful to keep the commandment and the law that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave to you, to love the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to obey his commands, and to hold fast to him, and to serve him with all your heart and all your soul. So, here we are commanded to love the Lord our God. God is a jealous God. He wants us to love him back, but not just love him, but to love him more than anyone or anything else. Uh, we may look at the Bible and think to ourselves, well, I don't have idols like they did. Is this really true, though? Idols does not mean molten images we worship. It doesn't, or it doesn't just mean that. Uh, idols can take m many forms. Uh, the biggest one I is money. We want to be rich. Uh, we work ourselves to the bone to make money, rather than simply trusting God to provide for our needs. This lifestyle takes away from our time spent with the Lord. Time with God should take priority over anything else you may have going on in, in your life. Addictions is another idol in, in humanity today, and, and this can take many forms as well. Uh, we crave things like gambling, drugs, al alcohol, cigarettes, pornography. Pornography, this is a major addiction, and sadly it is rampant among us churchgoers and, and believers in Christ. How can we claim to love God if we put these addictions between ourselves and our relationships with Christ? We can't. God is to be first and foremost in our lives. Addiction prevents this connection. At a later date, I will tackle addiction and its negative effects on our relationship with God, um, but, but for now I'll stay focused on love. 1 John 7.21 sums up this love perfectly. Uh, it says, Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. We know that we live in him and he in us, because he has given us the Spirit, and we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son in, of God, God lives in him, and he in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love loves in, lives in God, and God in him. And in this way, love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment, because in this world we are like him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear, because fear has to do with the punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. If anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, 
whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God must also love his brother. God himself is love. By living in love, we live in him. Perfect example of how we should strive to live, to love. This means stopping to help someone we see struggling, helping people in our neighborhoods and around the world who can't provide for themselves, go on global missions if able, or simply volunteer at soup kitchens, or even help out at your church. Love is not just an emotion. No, we must show God's love in the way we live, the way we talk, and in our actions. Love is an emotion, but it is also an action. That is not to say that Christianity is obtained through our good works. No, salvation can only come through a confession of repentance and profession of our faith in Jesus Christ and that he rose from the dead. Our good works should be a result of this faith. We need to be so on fire for Christ that we can't contain it. We must share it with the world. We must set an example of how we must live our lives and have that permeate every aspect of our lives. God's love cannot be contained. It must shine forth in the darkness that is threatening to destroy our world. Love God and know that he loves you.